And America is in worse condition than this nation. I said, God, I don't understand this at all. He says, you're going to see it. And says, here are seven things to watch. And God gave me seven things that I must observe. The number one was, America will depart from its historic faith. Now at that time, the Supreme Court hadn't done any of those strange things, such as permission to kill unborn babies, and given such rights to homosexuals. You see, none of that had happened. And God said there will be an amazing departure from the faith. And he says in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. God says this is that time for a departure from the faith. I was overwhelmed. God says go help save America. That America is the bastion of freedom on planet Earth. If America falls, the whole of Western culture goes down with it. Go bless America and help save America. I spent most of my adult life as a missionary from the time I was 20 years old until that time in a hundred nations of the world. And I said, Lord, I am I'm your servant. I would do whatever. He said further, I'd like to tell you that America will endorse pagan religions. And I said, what do you mean? He says, America will endorse all the pagan religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Mohammedism. Oh, I said, no, not for sure. I've been to India where there's Hinduism. It hasn't done anything for those people. I've walked through the Arab cities thousands of times. It hasn't done anything for their poverty. I said, I've seen Buddhism all through China and Japan. It, it has done nothing for them. It has not lifted them up nor made them prosperous. He said, America will endorse pagan religions just like Israel did in the Old Testament. After I had blessed, after I had helped, then they turned from me to other religions. I sat in my office, one of the most bewildered people you've ever seen, writing it all down. God said, you will see it. You will certainly see it. And I want you to know that Hinduism in many forms is growing in this country today. The Hare Krishnas, mostly led by young Americans, are showing that Hinduism can grow in this climate of unbelief and materialism in our country today. And they come saying, we're full of love. They've told me that so many times. And I said, well, I wish you could get full of God because he is love. And then you'd know what you were talking about. And the Lord spoke to me and said, not only will they turn from those religions, but they will also endorse doctrines of devils. That's in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. That man shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The devil gives birth to, to doctrines such as reincarnation. The Bible says there's a point in a man once to die, and after that the judgment, never again on planet earth. The heathen cooked that up from the devil. And many people in our country are believing it today. You say, what the world are the devil's doctrines? The devil's doctrines are, don't believe that Jesus Christ is a savior for the whole world. That he is just a tribal God, just for the Americans, the English, and the, and the British, and the Germans, you see. You see. But not, not, not a world God. Don't believe that Jesus Christ's blood can cleanse from sin. Don't believe, oh, don't believe that. You get better, 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 better by working your way up the ladder better. And don't believe that Jesus Christ is ever coming back to this earth to receive his own unto himself. Now, these are doctrines of devils. You know, that they don't want you to believe the truth. Then the Lord spoke to me further and said, I'd like to confirm this further with you. There will be Satan worship, not just heathen religions, but there will be Satan worship where people will worship Beelzebub, where, where they will where they will worship Lucifer, where they will have rituals of human sacrifice, and, and there will be 
a rising of Satan worship in that country, sitting in downtown Manila, in the heart of that country. I, I just couldn't believe it. And God said, now this is why I want to send you back home. You know all these places. You've been there. You know what their religion did for them in their native spot. It can't do more in another spot. And that the people will not know. And they will believe a lie. And they will be damned. So you must go help save America. And he said, I want to tell you something. I'm going to give you one million souls on television alone. You're going to win them to me on television. So I told my wife, I said, honey, we've got to go to America to live. She didn't want to. She's a missionary. I first met her in Argentina, but she was already a missionary. And we've been missionaries together for all these years. And God said, wait, I have more for you. He said, in America there will become a spirit of rebellion. He says, you'll see it in labor unions. That they fought no cause at all. They'll have a strike. He says, men that are thirsty for power, prestige, the face on the news and in the newspapers. He says, there will be anarchy among the youth running through the streets, throwing bottles and sticks and canes and all kinds of things. Rebellion. Rebellion on the campus, where you can't hardly have school anymore. Not only the universities, high school. Not only the high school, junior high school. He said that'd be rebellion in the home. Women will not want to live with their husbands. Want to live a gay life out there without responsibility. Husbands are sane. Won't want to live with their families. But go off and do that which is unseemly for a man who is a husband and who is a father. Now I can't tell you what went on inside of me because this was several years ago. So there would be a spirit of rebellion that it would be in the whole of the social structure of our country. That it would not be just in one part of it. But in the total social structure, there would be rebellion. And God said the greatest place of rebellion will be in the home. A place that used to be a place of tenderness, love, comfort. Then it will become a place of war. They will stop laughing, stop playing with one another, and start fighting each other. And homes will be destroyed. People will get married one time, two times three times, four times, little children drug from place to place to place, won't know who to love and who to hate. And I said, God, could it be? He said, I was brought up in a, in a loving home with a loving mother. And, and I lived around people whose homes were secure and, and, and strong and, and great. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't accept it. God said, you will see it. You will see it with your own eyes. He says, from coast to coast in your land, it will be like a tornado ripping through, tearing structures to pieces. Business will go to pieces because of divorce. Homes will go to pieces. Lives will go to pieces. People will become so confused they have to go into special hospitals because they have broken down the very fabric that creates a society. It's broken down. And that spirit of rebellion, screaming at each other, uh, hating each other, that it will boil like a tornado, twisting homes and twisting people and twisting families uh, to pieces. I sat there in my office in Manila and I was weeping. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry to hear it. I don't know what to do with it. What can I do? And the Lord says, you can go and warn them. Tell them that I told you before it came to pass. And, and so that they will know it for sure that these are part of the last days when we predict of that 2000 A.D. That, and, and that we must not be part of that rebellion. Many students leave school today because they've been there enough years to leave. They don't know very much, 
And when they leave there, they're in total rebellion against teachers, against the police, against their family, and many of them rove the highways and the streets of our great cities full of rebellion and hate against society. It can become a revolution. It can become a terrible thing. Maybe that's the reason crime has risen so high. It's because of a spirit of rebellion in our country. And that you and I should do something about it. I sat there and I was writing between the tears. I said, God, my country. I hadn't seen this type of thing in my country yet. I said, how can it be? God said, I wish to tell you more. And I said, yes. As he spoke gently to me, he said, America will have a tremendous change in its morals. An amazing change in its morals. I never could have believed that officials, principals and teachers in schools would hand condoms to a young man and say, don't make the girl pregnant. You see, you have told me that, I said, you're crazy. But God told me that. He, he told me, he said, so far in America, homosexualism has been practiced behind closed doors. It is a spirit that comes upon a man to cause him to lust for the body of another man. In Romans 1 and 24, it says God said that a man would give themselves to uncleanness through lust of their own, of their own hearts. In verse 25, it says these words, who knowing the judgment of God. I think the people of this world understand and know the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not just jail. They're worthy of death. And only, not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And millions of persons that are not homosexuals, they stand up and say, let them do it. They have a right to do anything they want to do. But when they get AIDS, they want everybody to come to their protection and come to their help. Very few lay people have any idea the magnitude of AIDS. I've never heard one official or one mass media anchorman say, well let's stop homosexualism. Let a man find a girl rather than an abnormal situation of taking a man to be a lover. Why don't we just change our way? Nobody says that. They say take billions of dollars of taxpayers' money and try to stop AIDS. If you did another disease, it would break out just as deadly, but they won't be able to do it. They don't know how to heal most major diseases. They can't handle cancer. They spent hundreds of millions trying to. They, they don't know what to do with it. The things that of a young man, until he can get to God, until he gets to know God, until he loves and serves God, then of course he, he is not, he cannot do the things that God would have him to do. Homosexualism is absolutely abnormal. Lesbianism is absolutely abnormal. And you have to be possessed of a spirit of lust to carry it on. And Jesus loves you. He can set you free. But God told me, before you came out of the closet, begin to march in front of the cameras, walked down our main streets, he told me it would happen. And I have come home to this nation to bless America. God has given me television stations in order to bless America. He has showed me that if we walk in his ways, they're good ways, they're right ways, they're correct ways, they're happy ways, if you walk in his ways. As I was writing at my desk in Manila, Philippines, God says, I'd like to also tell you that bestiality will come similar to homosexualism and that you will see on your television screen and you will see 
in your newsprint. I have a Life magazine in my office right now where a woman naked in the upper parts of her body is lying the full length of a German police dog and they are sucking each other's tongues in the picture in full color. There'll be a time when women will say, in order to get my dog to be comfortable and to get his nerves down, uh, we will have to, uh, uh, we have to do this. Now, it's wrong for a human to have intercourse with an animal. In Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 15, it says, if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And ye shall slay the beast. They should both be put to death. And if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereto, you see, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast, and they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That's in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verses 15 and 16. Now God told me these things before they came to pass. Today they are coming to pass. We need a revival in America. And that's what God told me. He only told me seven things. And the seventh one here was that like Daniel in Babylon, I began to weep before God, not for Manila anymore, but for my country, my country, this country. And, and God told me, he said, like it was in Acts chapter 2, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. These are the days of the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God the world has ever known. There might be darkness, but there's also light. There might be degradation, but yet there is elevation. God wants to bless and not curse. But you have to understand the, the fabric that put this universe together. If the sun didn't want to come up tomorrow and it didn't come up, and if the moon says, I'm tired of messing around, I want to do something else, you'd have a mess up in your cosmic world. The same is true in your moral world. You mess it up, and it's messed up. Same is true in your spiritual world. You mess it up, and it's not right. And I don't, it doesn't matter how well you defend yourself and say you have rights. You don't really have any rights. You have some responsibilities. And until we get to know that, America needs a revival. We are in the beginning of the greatest revival ever known among men. There will be those that will commit the things that we have talked about in deep sin. And there are going to be multitudes that will say this doesn't satisfy and I am not interested in it. I want God. And the outpouring of the Spirit of God in the gifts of the Spirit and the miracles of heaven will take place that will shake nation after nation upon the face of this earth. And I believe this will take place before the year. All nations as Western Europe and any other of the nations other than Israel. I believe that Western culture has been fulfilled. I believe the times of the Gentiles has gone into a state of confusion at this moment. Our whole modern world is confused politically, financially, economically, whatever, morally, spiritually. And there's awful confusion on the face of the earth as to how to conduct our own lives, how to conduct our families in, in our country. Uh, uh, there's a divorce for every two marriages. A child born today only has a 50-50 chance of living with mom and dad. That's in our own land. You can't have a good country like that. And I, I hope you know that. That is a sick nation. You know, ch children growing up to hate. They don't know who to like, you know. And so we need, in this country, a mighty revival of God. We need it. But if it is prophetic and the end is coming, then all we can do is warn you. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of God's answer. And if you do that, God will certainly love you for it. And so...